This is Jared Horak for the RunawayHorse.com. Welcome to my latest Win in Your In Breeders' Cup video. I've done two videos in this series so far, and then we're going to continue rolling on. I have two Breeders' Cup Win in Your In races this week. I'm going to do the Princess Rooney Invitational from Gulfstream Park in this race, and that's for July 2nd, and it is a Win in Your In for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. And I'm also going to do the Stephen Foster Stakes from Churchill Downs. Well, that is also on July 20, on July 2nd, and that is a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Now, some other videos that I will be covering this month on the Win and You're In series, I'm going to be doing the Haskell Stakes from Monmouth Park on July 23rd. That's a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Classic. And I'll also be doing, later this month, the Bing Crosby from Del Mar, and that will be a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Sprint on July 30th. Now, speaking of Del Mar, I'm going to be covering full cards each day that Del Mar runs this summer. You can find those full cards at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page. When Del Mar starts their meet, they will be starting their meet on on July 22nd. So I said I'll be covering the entire meet. You can purchase the entire meet. You can also purchase uh, weekly packages, weekend packages, and individual full cards. You will find all that information at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page. Now let's get into the analysis of this video. And I'm going to be doing the 10th race from Gulfstream Park on Saturday, July 2nd, 2022. The Grade 2 $300,000 Princess Rooney Invitational Stakes. Phillies and mares, seven furlongs on the main track, scheduled post time, 5.20 p.m. Eastern time, number one, Spirit Wind, six to one, Morning Line, will probably show speed from the inside post. She's run four times, three wins and a second, and they were all at Gulfstream Park at shorter distances, but she has been stretching out and, and doing progressively better. She started her career at four and a half furlongs, and she was second best that day. That was May 2021. Then she came back, and she's run three times this year. Uh, she broke her maiden by 15 lengths against Florida Bread Company. That was on February 18th at six furlongs. Again at six furlongs against Open Company, against three-year-old fillies in, in the stakes ranks, the Any Limit Stakes. That was at six furlongs on March 19th, and she set the pace, and she won by a couple lengths. And then last time out against Restricted Florida Bread Company, six and a half furlongs. While uh, she tracked from second, she took over. She won by five. Her speed figures are pretty decent, at least in two of her wins. Her maiden wins, she earned a nice number. And then last time out, she earned a decent number as well. So I would expect that she's going to try to attend the pace from the inside post. And she's going to have to step up her game a bit. She is facing better company. Number two, All Worthy for trainer Safi Joseph Jr. She's 8-1 to one morning line. She's run 11 times, three wins, a second, and four third place finishes. She exits a victory that was at Churchill Downs at six and a half furlongs against Optional Claiming Company, where she got up on the pace and she was able to win uh, fairly comfortably by two lengths. Uh, the second place finisher was a next out winner. So she beat a decent rival last time. Uh, she comes off that win. Uh, but she's going to have to step up her game a bit here. Uh, she has been facing Optional Claiming Company. Now she's got to jump into the stakes ranks. She does have a few stakes placings, but as I said, she will have to step it up. She's run two times at seven furlongs with two show finishes. She's run six times at Gulfstream with two wins and three show finishes. Number three, Glass Ceiling, seven to two. And she's one that certainly likes this seven furlong distance. She's five for 11 with two seconds and two thirds. Last time out in the Better Roses didn't really set up for her. It was a four horse field. Bella Sophia was the controlling speed there. The pace was slow and she tried to press early and then she dropped back and, and she ended up finishing third in that four horse field, uh, beating 11 lengths and she was well clear of the fourth place finisher. So everything kind of went wrong there. That was her first start after a short layoff uh, race just did not set up at all for her. She's one for one at Gulfstream Park. As we know, she loves this distance. She won the grade three distaff at Aqueduct at seven furlongs over, over the spring. Uh, the Barbara Fritchie at Laurel Park at grade three. She won that one at this distance. So as I mentioned, she's won multiple times at this distance, including some, some graded stakes wins. And she's got tactical speed. And I think that this is a much better spot for her second start after a layoff. Number four, Corey, 15 to one morning line. This one has some ability, but probably up against it from a class standpoint. She's seven for 17 lifetime with four seconds and three thirds. So she typically uh, runs her race and she likes golf stream. She's five for 12. She's hit the board several times as well. And she's one for one at this seven furlong distance. She won a handicap race 
at Gulf Street Park on April 22nd at 7 furlongs, stalking the pace and pulling clear. But she's going to have to run faster against better company. Number five, Cece. She is your four to five morning line favorite. Now, she won this race last year uh, fairly comfortably. She stalked the pace from post five. Again, she's got post five this year. She pulled clear. She won easily. And she also won the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint as my value top choice last fall at Del Mar. So that was a nice effort there at six to one odds. Now, she's run three times this year. Uh, the Santa Monica, she was second best that day. Uh, the race really didn't set up for her. There wasn't any speed in there. The agreed to Azari at a mile and a 16th. Uh, she stalked and she won that one. She defeated Paulina's Pearl and that one came back and won a stakes race in her next start. And then last time out, the grade one Apple Blossom, a race she has won in the past. Uh, she ended up finishing third behind Latruska and Clarier. And Clarier was the next out stakes winner at Belmont Park. And she was well, uh, CC was more than 17 lanes clear of the rest. So she ran a quality race last time. She's turning back in distance. She's run six times at seven furlongs with three wins, a second and a third. She's one for one at Gulfstream, and that one victory was uh, in last year's Princess Rooney. So she's back to defend her title. She's in decent form. She's fresh. Uh, and she looks she looks like the class of the field in here. And then number six, Make Mischief. Uh, this one, six for 18 uh, in her life with four seconds and three thirds. So she's got a decent record as well. And she won two of her last three starts. Uh, she won... Uh, an optional claiming race, a, a one-turn mile at Aqueduct on April 14th. The grade two ruffian, she was outclassed there. Uh, she finished fifth. Uh, she was wide. She just never really uh, got uh, seriously involved stalking the pace and then retreating that day. And then last time out against um, New York Bread Company in a stakes race, the Critical Eye at Belmont Park in a one-turn mile on May 30th. She ended up uh, getting up on the pace that day, winning easily, and the clear runner-up was the next out winner. So she's, I like horses with tactical speed, early pressing ability, breaking from outer posts in these extended sprints. I think Make Mischief, uh, based on her recent form, that last out speed figure was pretty strong. Uh, she's cutting back a furlong. I don't know if that, that necessarily helps her, uh, but she's got enough positional speed uh, to sit a decent outside stalking trip. Now, this this race definitely goes through CC, and I'm going to pick her on top. I, I'm just going off through this race. She's just clearly the class of the field. I'd like to try to beat the favorites when I can, but when they look good, I'm going to pick them on top. And CC looks pretty solid in here. Uh, sh she's uh, banked more than $2 million in her life. She's a multiple grade one winner. Uh, she's in decent form. She's fresh. She's got some uh, stalking speed and, and she should work out a good trip while out in the clear. So if, if CC runs her race, they're not going to beat her. She would have to regress in here for someone else to defeat her. So CC will be my top choice. Definitely will not make a win wager here. Maybe play a one way exacta with CC uh, over a uh, glass ceiling. I just think glass ceiling uh, had no shot last time. She can bounce back and run a better race. I'm not going to get seriously involved in betting this race, but I wanted to cover it in my Breeders' Cup winning your in series. And I will pick CC on top over glass ceiling. And if I had to select one other horse, make mischief from that outside post, maybe a, a trifecta a keying CC uh, over um, number three glass ceiling and number six make mischief. So that will wrap up my look at the Princess Rooney stakes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this content. And I'm going to be back with a second video this week. As I said, I'm, I'm going to cover the Stephen Foster from Churchill Downs. Until I do that, good luck at the races. <music>